What happened to the boat project? I thought you were gonna grab a boat from Texas and bring it back and then LS swap it. I, well, not everything's in this video, but we composed enough uh, of the footage together that we completely transformed this boat into exactly what we said we were gonna do. Check it out, here we go. found this 2005 Maxim 2100 SD, somebody neglected. I found this cheap Mercruiser 5.7 that we're gonna throw in. Guess the only thing to do is to try and fire it up. It's funny how you just change one thing. It doesn't even have oh, to be, I know. Oh, and it's like a whole new boat. Ian's coming to do some final measurements. We got a really neat design for the outside. We're gonna take the old stuff off. We're gonna polish the whole boat, and then we gotta do the wrap. Okay, so we're at Scott's Northtown Machine, and uh, I like to make things complicated. If I can save $1,800 worth of fuel to put the family on that, I will. It's just hard when the fans are always following you, wanting to see you work. It's crazy. All right, so this is a nice six liter, 2008. Uh, unfortunately, somebody's got dibs on it already, so we have to wait for at least the tenants to vacate. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're just about ready. Yeah. The, the fill cap's missing, which is the only thing, but I don't see uh, rust underneath there yet, so this one might be a candidate yet. So we'll, uh, we'll take a look. See if there's anything else. There's one right here. I've robbed parts off of this block before. But I don't know whether it's five three here. Four point eight five three. They just won't leave me alone. I want privacy. There it is, uh, older 2000s with a six liter. We're gonna take this out. And uh, this is an old fire truck, so I think it's uh, very well maintained. And we're gonna bore it out to 6.2. We got Solomon here who's gonna give us a hand. We're gonna pull some cab mounts off, yank this cab off, see if we can get this thing out in an hour or so. Um, and then go from there. Try and remember how these work. Whoa, that's a rough go. We've got wooden blocks holding the down with. Oh, but it's it's got multiple wires holding it, so that should be fine. That's fine. <laughs> it's been a while since I ran one of these, so I got there's something. And then the handle down. And then that makes it go up. We'll just let it warm up for a second. And then something back here. Oh, that's your, there we go. That's your stabilizer. Okay, see that one's hidden underneath that armrest there. All right, we got her. Okay, um, I think it's almost easier to pull the exhaust manifolds off than it is to get the grinder and stuff underneath there. So we'll probably just do that. Transmission mount. 
and engine parts, and she's almost over. It's not even super crusty. Nice. Okay, there she is, 6.0, nice and crusty. Um, we got her all out. We're gonna take the far lady off, put that in the trailer somewhere, strip off all the goodies. We've got lots of uh, poly goodies to throw on there and make it look brand new. So I'm excited about this one. There we go. Okay, she's all stripped. And even though we're in Ontario and it's all rusty and crusty, it was a fire truck. So look at that, it's like, it's like brand new. So uh, we know it's good on oil changes. I could probably take this engine and throw it right in, but we've got all the internals from our 6.2 that we rebuilt into a stroker for the 55. So might as well make the 6.0 a 6.2 because 0.2 is better. Here we go. Okay, so this is how I'm going to send it to Scott because we're going to use the heads off of the 6.2 anyway. And uh, I'm glad we did this anyway just because I don't know if you can see these marks. There's definitely some marks in the cylinder. They're not perfect. See those dots? I don't know what those are. Um, I don't know if we're sitting for a while or what. There's also some scratch and score marks there. So this is the perfect candidate to bore it out from 4.000 to 4.065. And um, that way, yeah, we could say we got a 6.2. So we're gonna throw this in the back of the 55 so Scott can check that out because he hasn't seen that yet. Take him for a rip in that. And uh, we'll bring him this goodness. And I actually, I washed it for him. I descaled it for him. I should, uh, this is, my marketing is working well because a lot of people, a lot of you guys are getting Scott to do your work now and now he doesn't have time for us. So uh, I got to do all this. Thanks a lot, guys. Here we go. Okay, so we're at Scott's North Town Machine and uh, dropping off the engine, new engine that had all the, we took all the internals out of that engine. And now we're taking the internals out of that engine and putting it into that engine. <laughs> so I like to make things complicated. <laughs> I've never done it before, so is it, will they all bolt in? Or we just have to board a bigger size because it's... Oh, uh, you got to board up. It's 4 so inch 135 or something? It's, this is exactly 4 inch, and I need 4.065. Oh. So I need 65 style board up. But I figure then we got a nice new engine. There's a couple marks on the sleeves, um, on the cylinders. So it's the perfect lock for it. Then everything's brand new, right? But those pistons and the crank and everything... We're in good shape out of the yep. other one, right? Yep, so. everything's good. Yeah, so. Maxi? So yeah, we'll make a video on how to make a boat engine. There's lots of uh, theories on using truck engines and putting them into boats and that, so we'll get into that. But uh, for now, I just gotta get it here to get it into queue. Because <laughs> you're, you're not busy at all. No, right? no, no. <laughs> yeah. So you'll get it back this time next year, no problem. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah.
We're back at Scott at uh, Northtown Machine and they took the 6.0 iron block. We thought, why don't we bore this one and turn it into a 6.2. Yep. So you've done plenty of those? Nope, this is the first one, to be honest. <laughs> so it wasn't hard though. It was easy. No? No, really easy. So yeah, so now basically it's a brand new engine, right? Yeah. And so the, the, we spec the crank and the and the rods and the and the pistons and all. They were all good, and that's what you said. Is like these all these internals are still really good. Yeah. So um, yeah, for so for the boat, it would have been nice if it was an aluminum block, but um, yeah, the cast would be better for the boat. Yeah, It'll have more torque. It'll handle a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Now we made a video on the difference between a marine engine and a like a truck engine, and I got some stuff wrong, and I didn't even notice when I pulled the pan off of my blown up 305. It was a two bolt, so I got that wrong. The marine engines are not all four bolts. No. 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 What are the other differences? Um, now I'm probably some people will probably argue this with yeah, me because uh, it's uh, it can't be straight across the board. But there's a conception out there that Merc Cruiser took blocks straight from the GM assembly line and added their own little external things twist, and threw them in a, threw them in a boat. Yeah. But um, you're saying that there was still a difference in pistons in some marine engines yeah. and 99% of marine from what I have seen, if it's a factory Mercury, forged pistons. Some people will argue with me that whatever i don't care the ones i've seen but the ones that i see you can tell the difference between the ones that are guys have swapped out for car engines because that's the most popular thing it's yeah. got 350 and oh they're the same engine let's just swap out for a car engine and it's not necessarily the same and a lot of the boat engines with the higher horsepower ratings had the what they call the propane rods in them and they were a powder like a sintered metal uh um, rod, a lot smoother casting, wider caps on it and stuff. Very different rod than a traditional cast. Now that only started though in late eighties. So okay. before that, they just ran uh, typical cat, like normal rods out of a 350, 454 and stuff like that. Um, but pistons to my knowledge were always forged pistons in a boat application, marine application and uh, cast iron rings. The main difference uh, from the cars to the boats is the cam. The cam doesn't uh, allow for the valve overlap, which is the reversion. Is there car or truck engines that have the forged pistons and the heavier rods? Yep. Okay, yeah, so where would they be? Uh, Corvettes, a lot of the Corvettes had different uh, forged power pack pistons and stuff like that. 327s, 283, all those things, they all had just a mixed mash of parts. Okay, so they took them off that assembly line yeah. and did not open them up. Yeah, sometimes even Mercury has other very specific engines too where they might even change the piston combination uh mercury had a ford engine that was a they call it a 203 i think it was and it was just a mash of a whole bunch of 427 pistons and 2.3 rods I, i'm not 100 percent, but it's it's a, a four-cylinder inline marine engine that wasn't available for a car and they just had a mash of different parts in it okay yeah so for this specific LS with it saying the torque is, it needs high torque at low RPM and most of that you get out of the cam. Did you build it any different than you would any other LS? Uh, no, I'm, all the LSs that I do in here, I will always do with the Clevite H bearings. Okay. And that'll handle any marine application. The marine application is constant load. So you have the water pushing back on the prop. So it's 100% load all the time yes so it's a quite a bit different than a car engine you have your neutral spots right you have yep. your coasting uh marine you don't have that unless you're in idle after you're in reverse or forward it's constant load all the time okay so back in the olden days they had the tradition was to put cast iron rings in it because it broke in easier and it wouldn't glaze over fast enough because the load uh, would cause problems with breaking in okay. but now when you get to performance blower engines and stuff you have to run the molly rings okay and the molly rings you don't break in the same as a cast ring um it's more about me and finishing the cylinders to those rings because if i have a little more aggressive crosshatch pattern that that the cast iron rings like to see then it'll wreck your molly rings because it'll chip it oh, so okay. i have to finish the cylinders a little bit different and then on the water you won't it'll, it'll it's finished to the way now for ls they don't have an option for cast iron rings they only have molly rings and up because of the new generation engines of these things okay so we had no options so i just have to finish the block properly for that type, type of ring awesome scott thanks yep. it was always a pleasure
a 6.2 back from Scott's. I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna paint it white because we did a really nice wrap on that boat. She looks pretty. And our Crusader manifolds are actually happen to be the same blue that the, uh, the boat is. So we'll do white engine, black uh, um, accessories, and um, probably a little bit of shiny on there, and then black intake, and then it'll all match the gray and the blue and the black and the white. Oh, wonderful. Um, now I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of Rust-Oleum and a can. There's engine paint, but um, unless you overheat your engine, the paint will be just fine. So I'm gonna prime it and then paint it white. Here we go. blank canvas to work and you know, to start from and uh never painted it white before but the, the semi-gloss white turned out really really nice really happy with that and now i know that there's probably a standard way of swapping an ls into a boat and uh unfortunately i don't know those ways i'm not part of that community but i'm going to build it the way i think makes sense and then we'll see if it works or not so you guys are gonna have to stick around and see if any of this makes sense but definitely comment down below if i get things wrong to start off with, we're getting rid of our mechanical water pump uh, for two reasons. One, the other water pump was old. And two, I have this electric water pump kicking around that I bought for something and I can't remember what I bought it for, but it is way too shiny and nice and pretty to not use in something. Now remember that when we're building engines, we want them to last, but in all reality, that boat, if it gets 300 hours on it, that's a lot of hours for a boat. Like, right, we bought it. It had nine hours on it last summer we put about another 10 on it um in reality we're gonna put on a really good year 30 40 hours on it a year so none of this has to last decades it just has to last like four or five hundred hours so even though a mechanical water pump is more reliable i think um we can control the coolant and the temperature better with this because an issue with the ls's in marines is that they get a pile of water flowing over them and they actually stay really cold um, they like being warm and i think we can uh control that better with a holly dominator setup so that is a standalone unit to make that run and we can wire that into the controls that are already there on the boat so key switch temperature gauges all of that fun stuff we can still control but um, we can turn the water pump on with the fan controls. So we can not circulate the coolant. Um, we'll still have the coolant going through the exhaust, so you get some cooling there. But basically, we're going to want to warm this thing up as quick as possible, and then we can turn the water pump on. And we can turn the water pump on as early as we want. So if we feel that we're getting hot spots, once we check it with, uh, with a gun and say, okay, it is actually getting warmer in the header and the cylinder's quicker than everything else, we can even turn it um on and off at different times we could even uh cycle the water pump just a little bit just to move the coolant around but not um not have it running steady so um that's what we're doing with the cooling system now there is we need a heat exchanger for a closed loop cooling system so generally a boat the water comes in goes through the engine comes back out in the lake what we're doing is circulating the coolant in the engine itself but we need a heat exchanger for that now you can buy really expensive marine heat exchangers but we decided to go this other route and just buy a pool heater. So this is all stainless off Amazon. It's the right size. Um, it's shiny, so it matches my water pump so we can uh, make sure that uh, everything looks pretty. But what's more important is the quality. And actually, just by looking at it, it's nice and heavy. You can see all the stainless pipes in there. So basically, we run the coolant um, from the engine through the pipes, and then we run the coolant from the lake through the outside of this. 
Um, that should work fairly well. And we're gonna mount that in the back here somewhere. Look how pretty that is. We got lots of room back there. Our marine headers that we bought, and we have to modify these for an O2 sensor. Um, you can buy adapter plates that go and raise this up even more yet, but then you've got one, two, three, four different gasket surfaces, and that makes me leery. So we're gonna try and modify these, because if I screw it up, these are fairly cheap, and then I can just buy another one. We only need one O2 sensor. And then we're putting a uh, mid-mount Holly accessory drive on there. That'll tidy this up real nice. Um, so the alternator and the power steering pump are going to come here. And that looks kind of like what the Audi looks like. And then on this side, we'll run our raw water pump for our cooling system. We have to modify that to the bracket to make it fit. And that was like 200 bucks. So obviously, you know, if I can save $1,800 worth of fuel to put the family on that, I will. So let's put this together. Um, it's pretty straightforward. We're gonna do the simple stuff first and then we'll, uh, we'll keep chatting. Here we go. bracket on we need the spacer to line up the uh, pulleys with the crank um, without the spacer then you're able to um, pull it in if you've got uh, your tight for room you can and your pull dampener is closer in but uh, we've got this also have the side mount bracket and that actually is slotted so you can put it in in either spot as well so you've got this little bracket that goes right here and if you're farther back, you utilize these two holes. And if the if it's farther forward, then this hole is exposed and the bracket lines up with these two. And then it's slotted to fit this hole in the bottom there. So um, we're gonna move it forward. And then our front is pretty well done. I'm not sure if this is exactly where this is gonna go. Um, I just put the holders that come with this pool heater um, on the back of the cylinder head. And this one, because the head is forward, is an inch ahead, so just put an inch spacer in there for now. We'll see if this works. Um, the spacing kind of works out so that it misses the, uh, the fittings. I'm definitely gonna wanna put a rubber dampener, like uh, something in there just to uh, soften that blow. But for now, this is a, uh, it's kind of the perfect spot to hold it in my head, and it looks so pretty. It's on a slight angle, but I can change that easy enough. And I don't think it even really matters. It's gonna hold it. It even changes the shape of it. Look at that, oh. I'm really happy with that. Other than, I might have to tilt it and get that fitting move because no matter what, it's gonna point down to the bell housing, but you know what? I got a 90 degree fitting, it'll be fine. Yeah, I know it. I might rotate it just a little bit, but I will have lots of room there. Nice. Sweet. For engine mounts, we're just using these hooker 94 to 2006 Mustang, I think. It was the biggest plate that I could find that basically just already has the bolt holes lined up for you. You can put the plate on there. And depending on where the, uh, you want your holes to tilt your engine, these ones had the nice, uh, already the same angle. Almost both in the same spot. I basically weld them together and I can probably stick this one right through. Have one hole lined up and then just weld it on the rest of the way. That doesn't get much easier than that. The hardest part is trying to find a 12.10 millimeter socket. I guess we're ratcheting it like a Mennonite. And if I want to move it farther back, we just move it to the back hole. 
I guess I could drill and tap the plate so I can unbolt the mount or we just get out the buzz buzz welder box and away we go. And if that's the wrong spot, you can flip the plate around and turn it the other way or flip it upside down and whatever it takes to make it work. But well, we can make it work. That's pretty sweet. This is what we're gonna do. And then we can put the dipstick in and attach that to the plate so it clears our manifold. Done, bam. Okay, so we went with Crusader manifolds and they've got the, the water jackets on either side to keep your exhaust cold. We're not doing a through, through haul exhaust because I wanna hear my kids screaming. And they look kind of cheap um, until you take the paint off and you see they got a really nice machine surface. One little imperfection there, but um, they uh, will do the job just fine. So we're gonna bolt that down. Um, this one will stay permanent. Try to use uh, multi-layered steel gaskets, so it does work better. But um, they are heavy, so if weight is an issue, <laughs> these are not the answer. But we'll bolt these on, and uh, to take the paint off, just scrape them off. They paint the surfaces, I'm sure, so that they don't rust in transit. But um, uh, these will work good for us, because they actually match the boat. So I'm gonna bolt that on, and go from there. <sighs> Even just, the single one is enough to give you a bit of a hernia. Is that not like a big hernia? It's not like operating wise, but you're like, something doesn't feel right. Hernia. Know what I mean? You guys been there before? No? Okay, so this is the riser that uh, goes in between there. Now, this is where I plan on putting my O2 sensor, so I gotta drill it here, but I have to seal it on the inside and on the outside because the water goes through here and then circles around, cools the exhaust. So um, comment below if, if, there's, if that's a good, th good idea or a bad idea or, um, or there's a better solution. I know we can spend more money and buy the aluminum adapter that has the O2 bung put in there, but that's another stack in there and it's aluminum, it's not painted blue. So it'll look, it'll just look weird. And then I can't match the paint and then the blue is gonna be slightly off and then the, the views are gonna go down. So what what I'm planning on doing is figuring out some way of drilling a hole or, or even threading, threading it and threading the casting and then like Loctiting that in. So, something to that effect, I don't know. But for now I'm gonna take some threaded rod from Prince's Auto um, and put these on there because I wanna see what this engine looks like and uh, that's not gonna be in this video anyway. So, there we go. Okay, now the intake, I would've went with a, with a different intake, but really the only intake that I could find for square port is um, aluminum, the, the big heavy aluminum from Holly, and they're pretty heavy. So we're gonna stick with this intake, but it looks kind of poo-poo. So I had Andy go back to the yard and pick up the factory cover just to finish that off. And actually, that doesn't even look that bad. So, that's pretty. We got lots to do yet, and we'll keep going, but uh, that's what it's gonna look like underneath the hood, or the, yeah, nice. This is what's coming up in the next video. Um, I have my pulley here somewhere for the uh, power steering pump. It's laying around, but we'll put that on. We'll get the fan belt working with the tensioner. Um, we need to plumb in this uh, heat exchanger to the cooling system itself. We need to wire it, um, and that's a whole video. That's almost a whole video on its own. That's why we're we're kind of just stopping here. What happens when we shift is we need to. Um, cut the timing somehow to uh, allow the 
um, transmission to go into gear and then as soon as we're in gear rev back up again so it doesn't stall so I'm gonna see if we can do that inside the Terminator if not um, we have to hook up a, a relay to the ground wires on say half the coils so what it does is shut the ground off to the coils so that the coils don't fire and then they kick back on again right away we also need to put our uh, raw water pump on there and also there's a couple other small things but you will have to uh, stick around for that video when that comes out. This is basically how I work with my projects. I work until I have a certain point where I need to order a bunch of parts. Those parts are on their way, marine starter, a bunch of other stuff, some of those things are on delay. So that means I'm back on um, other projects. So I'm working on the Bronco here as well at the same time and uh, we're getting closer and closer to firing that thing up. So watch out for those videos. And uh, we got so much more coming up on the channel. You really don't want to miss. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss, so you don't come back three months later and things are all different and you're like, what's going on? So uh, yeah, and remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich. Although this is marine and my hands are pretty clean. Nice white engine. <laughs> Get out there and work on it, guys. Here we go.